Hello and welcome to Let's Make Tracks, TT120, The Rambler. Today, Hornby's first year anniversary for the entire TT120 range. So it is currently 9.30 in the morning. Throughout the day, I'm going to keep track of everything Hornby wants to show us. Hopefully we'll get some new stuff. Maybe some looks at some renders, uh, decorated samples, who knows. Um, the TT120 challenge results should be today as well. So wish me luck for that one. And obviously everyone else that's entered. So let's just begin this ramble. Happy anniversary. Okay, so let's kick off this TT Takeover Day with, uh, so far, the only post we've had from uh, Hornby on their Facebook page. Uh, obviously, obviously, a screenshot will be up here. <clears throat> One year of Hornby TT. Join us for celebration the whole year of TT 120 Joy with a special TT Takeover Day. Thank you. So the first major thing they've announced for today only, the 10th of October today, is uh, double reward points. Um, I believe that's only for TT products. For one day only, you can earn double hobby reward points on any in-stock TT120 products. So yes, TT120 products, but they have to be in-stock. So unfortunately, no pre-orders. So that's just something to bear in mind there. So again, hopefully if we get revealed something later, then maybe we can take advantage of that. So, I mean, that's the first thing. And it would make sense that they get that information out as quickly as possible, because someone may wake up this morning and go, one year anniversary of TT, I'm going to treat myself to X, Y, Z. So that makes sense. Um, obviously, the uh, the diorama challenge results will be out today. I haven't, apart from the diorama post that they did a few weeks ago, and that was prior to September 17th, they said that they were going to be announcing the results today. I've also read that there was going to be some sort of vote system. However, it's the temp today and I haven't seen anything in the way of voting so I can only assume at this point that they might have dropped the whole vote thing and it may just be whoever the marketing team decide is first second and third and runner up or however they want to do it I don't know that's the entire point of why we're here so in this post they've also featured some layout photos uh, who have we got here? This one's from Patrick Nigel. Nigel? I apologise if I'm butchering your name. But um, I have seen this one featured on Hornby's Facebook page before, and the rest of his photos are pretty spectacular and well worth a look. Uh, second one we have here is from Steve Perell. Um it looks familiar, but I'm not sure if I've actually seen this one shared online before. So this may be from someone's personal photo collection, which they've obviously shared for the TT day. Obviously, if there's any more out there, then I would love to see more of that because that looks quite, quite good. Uh, this next one is from Dave Burns. So more on Dave later, but he's got a YouTube channel. And he has also entered the diorama challenge. So good luck, David. See you in the top three, hopefully. But 
we've got who's that? That's Falcon going over a very nicely done level crossing there. Yeah, very good. It's always nice to see what other people can do with the TT range. And this one is from Peachy with his modified mallard. Excuse me. With his modified mallard into wartime black. And he's got his firebox flicker in there as well. I believe he had... I know he painted it himself. There's a video online. But I believe the uh, the lighting was done by This Way Works. I'm pretty sure he has. There's a whole video he's done on it. So if you're interested in that, that it's definitely worth a look. It's wonderful stuff coming out of Peachy. Peachy, 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 peachy. And that's it for post number one for TT Takeover Day. I don't believe anything else has occurred just yet. Um, one or two conversations sparking up in the... Ah, there we go. Something else has happened. So I'd, I'm going to put another screenshot up here. Um, on the original post that we were just discussing, obviously the, um, the main picture was the one-year anniversary logo. And as you can see here, I've commented... Do you have this in banner form? I'd like to use it for blah, blah. And literally as I'm recording this now, I've just come off to see if they've updated anything. And right there in front of me, there it is. There's the logo in cover form. Right, that's already a small update right there. Right, so as far as socials are concerned, that's where we are right now at... It's 10.30 now. I took a little bit of a break to eat some of my cake. OK, so while we're waiting for Hornby to uh, pump more out on their socials, um, I've comprised a list of who I believe, for me personally anyway, you may disagree, who I believe have kept the spirit of uh, TT120 going strong this last year or however long they've been active. Um, I would love to give a rundown of every single person on this list and why they deserve to be on this list, but this is probably already going to be a long video. So all I'm going to say is I'm going to read these names. If you know them, great. If you don't know them, check them out after this video or even now. I might be boring you. Who knows? But in no particular order, um, who we got? Sam's Trains. Pretty standard one there. Uh, Mad Merlin, Western Signalman, This Way Works, David's TT Trains, Gary Hall, Simon Shedd, Mike Lane TT120, Model Loco, and Peachy TT120. Peachy, 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 Peachy. Sorry, I couldn't help. Damn you, Mario. But yeah, that's my top 10 TT120 content creators on YouTube at the very least. There may be more out there. I may have missed some very, very good ones. If you have a favourite TT120 content creator that wasn't just mentioned, comment down below and I'll 100% take a look. Okay? So they're the ones I believe are keeping the spirit of TT120 alive and burning. Right, so that might do for this segment of the video. Let me just go back on to... So I'm recording this on Skype and I'm doing the whole background. Oh, hello. Right. So I've gone on just, this was eight minutes ago. Happy Hornby TT one year anniversary. I'll put the post up here. It's been a terrific year since launching the 120. We want to celebrate with you. To mark this special occasion, we are giving you a chance to win an incredible TT bundle worth £764.95, including the Scotsman train set, digital sound fitted, a Flying Scotsman, a Mallard, the Engine Shed, and Track Pack 1. To enter, follow us on either Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Tell us in the comments what locomotive you would love to have in the TT120 scale. The competition ends on the 17th of October, 2023. The winner will be announced on our website and socials the 19th, yeah, the 19th of October, so two days later. Full T's and C's at da-da-da. 
Uh, all the legal jargon. Yeah. So there we go. Literally, as I'm sat here recording, more stuff is occurring. So I will try and get this video out today. So all this information I'm giving you is relevant. But yeah, I'm going to have to keep refreshing my browser. Anyway, so yes, that is it for this particular section. I will be back a little bit later. For you, it will be seconds. For me, it will be later when uh, we have a bit more to discuss. Right, OK, we're back again. So I stepped away from the computer for a few hours and stuff has occurred. So the first thing, there was a post that included a video. So again, screenshot up there. Um, it basically just looks like the video from the initial launch of TT120. So we've all seen it, so nothing spectacular there. Um, what else is there? There is there's a couple of links, so let's see if these are any different. OK, so I have already seen that, so I know exactly what that is. Uh, it's basically a roadmap of everything that's happened over the last year. So if you're interested in that or you haven't already seen it, obviously I'll put the link down below. But not going to, that's an eight minute video, so obviously I can't realistically play that here. So that should mean that this other link is the more interesting one. This one, this is a Beyond the Buffers podcast. Uh, okay, so we've got Michael Day. And he's interviewing um, uh, Sam Watkins, product designer. There you go. So they have a sit down for about half an hour. And again, it's not exactly fantastic what they're going over. I think they've missed a huge opportunity here to at least show us at least one thing that we didn't already know about. But I'll let you watch the entire video yourselves and see what you make of it. The interesting stuff starts occurring uh, about halfway through. I don't know if I can find the exact timestamp. But the really interesting stuff is towards the end where they get one of the uh, painted class 50s onto the old uh, TT120 layout that they've got. The old one, not the new one. At approximately 26.32. We get some good look, good looks at the printed sample of the class 50. This is in the green livery and we get a very, very small cameo for the Mark II coaches. And it, um, there's another guy in here, uh, the sound tech. He goes through the um, sound profiles if you get the new HM7000 installed. But uh, they demonstrate the lights as well. Um, as of right now, this is the only future thing we've had from uh, TT Day. One decorate, well, if you count the coaches, two. Two decorated samples being shown, which again is a bit disappointing. But um, I mean, it's better than nothing. So that was that. And moving on to the other thing that occurred while I was uh, not at my screen, they've unveiled the results for the TT Diorama Challenge finally. And as I suspected, they've completely dropped the whole vote system. But getting to the point, I came third. So the first place went to Stephen Whitting, and he's um, be a picture up here. He's built his TT layout inside of a glass coffee table, which does look pretty spectacular, and it gives him a good excuse to leave it out all year round. So that's a fantastic idea. And coming in second, we have what looks like a dockside layout, but uh, going off the images, it looks like it runs around the entire. It runs along the walls because that's 100% a radiator under there. So, I mean, it does look phenomenal. I mean, it did say in the rules the diorama could be any size. So 
fair play to him. But that looks very uh, London suburbs. If I didn't know any better, I'd say those two bridges are disused. Or is that a bridge on top of a bridge? It might be a bridge on top of a bridge, you know. Um, when um, there is a link where it says see more on the website or something along those lines, I did click on the link, but it's not giving me anything at the moment. So if it updates that, then uh, I'll get a better look at this. But that, looking at it right now, it looks like a bridge on top of a bridge. But again, they're both fantastic. And congratulations to places one and two. And um, what's the word I'm looking for? Commiserations to uh, everyone else that entered but didn't quite make the board. I know of at least two guys that uh, pump out videos that entered the Diorama Challenge. Uh, I mentioned them earlier on my YouTube list. Uh, Model Loco and David, David Strange? David's TT trains. I think that's right. I need to double check that before I make a massive editorial edit error. Hang on. David's TT trains. Because I just get it on my YouTube. I click on it and I watch it. I don't necessarily pay attention to the title. The guy's name, yep. Hollybush. That's how I know it, Hollybush. So, yeah. Both Model Loco and uh, David TT Trains um, or Hollybush, they're both fantastic layouts and I am disappointed for them that they didn't quite make it onto the board because um, I would really have liked to have seen them there. Not taking anything away from the two guys that have one, but obviously, yes, check them out. I know their channels are slightly bigger than mine, so... It's, it's a bit of a thing, me telling you guys to check them out, but I'm going to say it anyway because they're still good. But yes, third. So I win the third prize pot, which I believe is £150 worth of Hornby points. So I've had a little think about it. I've already got my Scotsman. I've already got an 08, which, as it stands right now, leaves the A4s. So it is a coin toss between Mallard and Falcon, I think. Now, nothing against Silver King, but um, I do prefer Blue on an A4. And if I did get Silver King, I'd probably have to rename and number it to uh, Union of South Africa anyway. Bitten is actually in the um, Hornby Visitor Centre at the back. So they're yet to open that piece of the exhibit. And when they finish the re refurb they're doing at the moment, hopefully, that will open up and we can finally get in and have a good look at that. But anyway, settled on an A4. Mallard or Falcon? Now, if I do get the Falcon, that'll be renamed a number two Sir Nigel Gresley. Again, for preserved. So it is literally a coin toss. I just happen to have a coin. Oh, I'm going to put a photo up because that's really blurry. But uh, I've got Mallard on the front. And Great British Station's Discovery Tours on the back. Again, there'll be a picture in the corner up there because the glare is really bad on there. But um, if anyone does know where I can get any more of these coins, please let me know because I've got this one and the Bristolian. And I really like these coins and I'd like to get more. But I have I found these two on eBay, but I can't find any more anywhere else. So if anyone knows where I can get more, please comment below. Or if you have some of these coins that you might be willing to sell for reasonable prices, then again, please let me know. So I think it goes without saying, Mallard for Mallard and uh, Stations for Falcon. So heads, tails. Ready? We have a Mallard. We are getting a mallard. So, that's it. Decision made. As soon as the points hit my account, then mallard it will be. Right, so, a um, couple of thank yous, I suppose. Uh, Jennifer Kirk over on Weir Yard for sharing my videos 
Um, I must be getting to the point now of being slightly annoying, uh, showing essentially the same thing over and over and over again. And hopefully I'll be at a point now where I can show something else. And uh, obviously uh, Mallard is now in the pipeline. So uh, that's the third locomotive I'll be able to get to review. So anyway, um, long story short, I think ultimately that might be the end of uh, the TT takeover day, which as much as it's been kind of fun, um, I do feel like it's been a bit of a missed opportunity because uh, I'm into other franchises elsewhere. And if they were to run a day like this, then there would be something uh people that are familiar with comic cons uh will potentially know what i'm talking about but um for let's just say the el the older generations you may not but this would have been a perfect opportunity to at least tease what's coming in the future i mean i appreciate them being a bit nostalgic over the last year and giving themselves a pat on the back and fair play to you but we haven't been given anything to look forward to as such. Yes, we got to see the Class 50 decorated sample, but not. we didn't exactly get to see it close up. So it is what it is. That's it, I think. So uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I appreciate this is probably not everyone wanted from TT Day, but it is what it is. Um, You've still got a chance to take advantage of the double points for today, depending on when you're watching this. And um, yeah, that's it, done and dusted. So thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time. Uh, this has been Let's Make Tracks TT120 Rambles. Take care, guys. Bye bye.